Hey boys and girls, Mr. Samosa here. Got an awesome video planned for you guys today. Today, we're gonna to be learning a little bit about Black History Month and soul food and the history of that. Where'd it come from? How'd it get here? Hopefully you guys can learn a little bit about this. Have an awesome time, strap in, here we go. Kwaku woke up as the sun rose. His mother had prepared a breakfast of roasted yams, tomatoes, and onions. A couple centuries ago, European sailors had brought these plants from the Americas to West Africa. Western Europeans began arriving in West Africa as early as the 1400s. They enslaved West Africans to build their settlements. Because of the transatlantic slave trade between Europe the Americas, and Africa, many different foods were exchanged between the continents. African foods such as okra, watermelon, and coffee were exported to the Americas. Corn, potatoes, and sugarcane from the Americas were brought to Africa. Europeans brought cows and the cultivation of cheeses and milk. Now right here, my friends, we see something very important. We see that the food is moving from country to country. We have foods that are coming from Africa, moving to the America. We have food from the Americas moving to Africa. We have food from Europe moving to Africa and to the Americas. And in this triangle, we see the food just transporting from place to place. It would be the last day he would live in his native land. That night, European slave traders kidnapped Kwaku and his family from their beds. They were chained and kept in the hold of a slave ship en route for the United States. One hundred years later, Kwaku's great-great-grandson, Samuel, was born on a South Carolina plantation. Indeed, Samuel was far away from the bountiful gardens of West Africa. But Samuel and his family still grew West African foods like black eyed peas, greens, and okra. Samuel also grew watermelons in their tiny garden. Right here we could see them growing all these amazing vegetables and fruits in their gardens here in America. Eventually it's going to become delicious, delicious soul food. Let's find out how. With no break. It was easy to become sick from the heat. They found that eating pieces of watermelon would keep them from fainting and ultimately use this delicious food to survive. Plantation owners believed pork to be the healthiest kind of meat and they usually raised hogs for slaughter. Samuel learned how to cook with the leftover hog pieces like intestines and feet. His mother would use the leftover bones to flavor food. Samuel had a great-great-grandson named James, and James loved to cook. James could make fried chicken so well that friends and family would pay him to cook for their parties and holiday dinners. James learned how to fry chicken from his grandmother, who had learned from her mother, who had once been enslaved. During antebellum, white southern slave owners believed that chicken caused disease and sickness. Subsequently, James's great-grandmother, who was enslaved at the time, was allowed to raise a few chickens. She passed along her fried chicken recipe to her children, and eventually James learned this recipe. James's chicken became so popular that he eventually opened his own restaurant. James loved listening to a new kind of music called soul music. He decided to call his new restaurant the Soul Shack. Fifty years later, James's grandson Amir sat in his university lecture hall. He couldn't wait for winter break. His stomach grumbled as he thought about the greens and sweet potato pie that his mother would cook. Amir was studying history. He wanted to be a professor. He often wondered about his own family history. During dinner, he asked his father, who was my great grandfather? What was he like? Amir's father only knew that he had been enslaved on a South Carolina plantation 
many years ago. That night, Amir fell asleep, dreaming of a faraway place with deep green plants and trees, and of a people who were strong and brave. Hey boys and girls, I hope you guys learned something amazing, just like I did, about soul food and where it came from. I have something amazing that I'm gonna make, which is some delicious cornbread. So stand by, my friends, and maybe you guys can make it at home too with your friends and family. Bye, guys.